simple harmonic motion. I guess the begs the question, what's regular harmonic motion? Before you get to simple harmonic motion. And then sure enough, there is stuff called complex harmonic motion. Here's the basic idea, maybe you want to jot this definition down. <coughs> For something to be harmonic. Okay? The idea is about oscillation. Now maybe um, that's just replacing one confusing word with another. So we're trying to put some more basic English under it. It's wherever you've got some object and its movement is back and forth. Back and forth. Or up and down or something like that. Okay? So some examples, right? Um, things that move back and forth. Okay? Um, a pendulum is the, is the classic example. Okay? I'll talk about the pendulum in more detail in a second. Um, another good example would be, say, a metronome. It goes, it ticks back and forth, okay? Now these tend to be left, right, yeah? Left, right, left, right. What kinds of things go up and down? Hmm. Um, I would say tides, for instance. Tides go up and down, okay? I would say a bouncing ball, if it's, if it's bouncy enough. Like, not like a medicine ball, which is, a, you know, that, that is not harmonic, it's not oscillating. But um, a bouncy, bouncing ball. The key thing is that it's going up and down, back and forth. Um, it's changing direction over and over and over again. Okay, so it's not just like oh, there's one stationary point or just a couple. There's just you know as many as you can, based on however much uh, force is applied into the situation. Okay, now I said we're looking at simple harmonic motion. What's complex harmonic motion? Uh, let's think about this bouncy ball. Okay, now everyone knows that even if you have a really, really, really <coughs> bouncy ball. Okay that when you drop it from some height, okay, if we do height versus time, okay, it's not going to come back the same height that it went, that you dropped it from, right? Uh, it's not going to get quite so high and it's going to lose energy throughout, okay? Now, this kind of process of losing energy is often called damping, right? Uh, so this is complex motion in that it's, it's got other forces acting on it, not just this back and forth business, okay? Uh, in the same way, a pendulum, right? Like a real pendulum, is just is actually got um, air resistance on it, right? So if you pull it and then you let it go, eventually it'll stop. Okay. So therefore, maybe a metronome is a good example because it's actually being driven, and it. I mean, that's the point of it. It's going to be rhythmic and it's going to keep on going at a particular frequency. Okay. So here's the important thing about simple harmonic motion. There are um, two ways to define this. I'm going to give you the um, visual intuitive one first, and then we'll have a look at the algebraic one. All right. Let's draw a sine curve. Like just a regular old sine curve. Okay. So some things to note about this. If an object is moving and its displacement follows something like the sine curve, um, this kind of shape we call um, a sinusoidal wave. Anyway, uh, which is where we get sine from. If it's doing this, that's what we call simple harmonic motion. So some things to know. Number one, uh, it's periodic, right? So it's going to repeat regularly, right? Which is different from this. This is repeating, but it's not repeating regularly. There's no period. There's no like every two pi I'm doing this, okay? Um, it repeats its motion, but it, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's actually not periodic. Okay. Secondly, we have what's called a um, a single equilibrium position. Now that's a bit of a mouthful, and it's kind of a misnomer because equilibrium <coughs> sounds like something you do when you get yo you do yoga or something, and you're like in this <laughs> state where you're very still. Okay. In simple harmonic motion, the equilibrium position is the opposite of that. It's that you're moving the fastest at that point. It's your center of motion, okay? Because if you can imagine, this is, you know, some particle and it's going up and down and up and down. As it passes the origin, right, x equals zero, it's racing past at the maximum speed. That's the fastest it can go, okay? So the important thing is there's just one, okay? So 
Uh, later on, for instance, we'll get to look at graphs, which are you know, the sums of different kinds of frequencies of sinusoidal waves. And so they don't just have one crest uh, and one equilibrium position. They'll do things like this. They'll go up here, and then they'll come down here, and that kind of thing. Okay? Now, this is complex harmonic motion. right? It's got more than one equilibrium position where it's racing past. Okay? Um, and lastly, these extremities. These extremities are where the maximum force is being applied to the object, okay? So you can see, at this point where you stop, right? You're the furthest away, and so you're being pulled back the most, and that's why it stops and turns around, okay? And that's why the equilibrium position is, is called the equilibrium position, because at that particular point, there are no forces acting on it, okay? In some senses, that's where the object is happy, okay? So it's not being pushed one way or another. The reason why it's still moving is because it has this momentum which carries it until it gets pushed the opposite way. Okay? So there's kind of what it looks like. right? Now in terms of a, a mathematical definition, here's what marks, um, here's the equation um, that marks simple harmonic motion. Okay? And it has to do with what we've been looking at in terms of acceleration and displacement. Okay? Now acceleration, force, I told you, is based on how far you are away from this equilibrium position, okay? So if this is x equals zero, the further you are away, the more force you have in the opposite direction. So if I'm really far in the positive direction, I'm being pushed in the negative direction. Does that make sense? And that's why I turn around. And if I'm in the negative direction, I'm getting pushed in the positive direction. So that means acceleration has the opposite sign of the displacement, okay? Because if I'm... Uh, in the positive direction over here, this will be negative. And if I'm negative here, this will be positive. Okay? But this is rather neat. We want to say, you know, this might be bigger or wider. Okay? So we stick in, sorry, that's not a, I was going to write K. We actually stick in a constant here, N squared. Okay? The, the squared is just to make it positive. Okay? This is not just any equation, it's called a differential equation. You might have heard, heard me um, sort of say that word offhand. All it means is, you're relating some function to one or more of its derivatives. In this case, it's a function and it's second derivative. Okay? So sometimes you'll say um, words like prove the differential equation for um, this simple harmonic motion or something like that. Okay? And this is what they're referring to. Uh, it's, it's big, flowery language. All it means is there's a function, there's its derivative, second derivative. That's how they relate to each other. Okay? They're uh, proportional to each other. That's it. 